Welcome, everyone. I am Peter Ubertasio, Vice President for Academic Affairs, and I declare the installation of the ninth president of Caldwell University now open. We will begin our inaugural ceremony with the national anthem. Please remain standing for the invocation, which will be delivered by Monsignor Robert Emery of St. Aloysius Church following the national anthem. Thank you to the Caldwell University Wind Ensemble for that beautiful rendition of the Star Spangled Banner. The invocation will now be offered by Monsignor Emery. Monsignor Emery was with us this morning, <laughs> and I know that he is a good and faithful friend of Caldwell University. So for some reason, he has not joined us today. So I wonder, unexpectedly, if we might have someone join us for the, I'm just pausing, pregnant pause to see if someone might be thinking that they could come up with a prayer. and I. I think maybe Sister Kathleen's the person to do it. Thank you, Sister Kathleen. Well, greetings. We gather on this joyous day, a day that God has made, a day that we celebrate the mission, tradition, and spirit of Caldwell University. We celebrate with our students present, with our faculty present, with our alums present, with our board of trustees, an esteemed, esteemed guest who join us. And nothing but praise is to be had in that presence. And so we pray, loving and gracious God, we ask your special blessings on today. We ask you to continue to bless Caldwell University in being a voice of your truth, a voice of your learning and teaching, and a voice that will continue to build a just world. Gracious God, we ask your blessings on our ninth president of Caldwell University, Dr. Matthew Whalen, as he does understand and embrace the fact that he does stand on the shoulders of greatness, the shoulders of the Sisters of St. Dominic who founded Caldwell University, who founded it to ensure appropriate education goes forth to our students. And we ask you to instill in Dr. Whalen the beliefs of the pursuit of truth and so that he 
continues to praises, to praise and to bless and to preach through his presence and his leadership. And we ask special gratitude, Lord, on all of us gathered here today, especially our faculty who are the voices to our students. And so we pray in gratitude, Lord, for this blessed day, asking you to be a part of this day. We know you're here and asking you to bless all that we are about this day. God bless you all. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you, Sister Kathleen, for such wonderful, beautiful, and unexpected words this morning. Members of the clergy, Sisters of St. Dominic, members of the Board of Trustees, Caldwell University faculty, staff, students, and alumni, presidents and delegates from the world of higher education, dignitaries, members of the extended Caldwell community, and to Dr. Whalen and his family. It is my honor to welcome you to the inauguration of Dr. Matthew Whalen, ninth president of Caldwell University. I would like to begin by giving a special welcome to the former presidents of Caldwell who are here today, Sister Patrice Werner, and Dr. Nancy Blattner. Thank you both for your contributions to this wonderful institution. To all of you assembled, we are honored by your presence and thank you for being with us in celebration of Caldwell's future. I joined Caldwell University as the Vice President for Academic Affairs just four months ago. Like Dr. Whalen, I grew up in New Jersey before my professional career took me out of state. And I know because we've had the chance to discuss this at length, Dr. Whalen feels as fortunate as I to have our careers come back to New Jersey and to call Caldwell our home. This is a very special place built by courageous sisters, a place of learning, reflection, and service to God and our community. We begin our ceremony with greetings extended to Dr. Whalen from representatives within the very community that makes Caldwell the extraordinary place that it is. First, Sister Luella Ram, prioress of the Sisters of St. Dominic of Caldwell, will speak on behalf of the Dominican Council. Good afternoon, Dr. Whalen. Distinguished guests, trustees, administration, faculty and staff, students and alumni, sisters of St. Dominic, family members and friends of Dr. Whalen. How good it is for us to be here. It is my great pleasure as the prioress of the Sisters of St. Dominic of Caldwell to greet Dr. Matthew Whalen as the ninth president of Caldwell University, the first layman to serve in this position. Dr. Whalen is no stranger to us as he has been leading the university since July 1st, 2020, amid the global COVID-19 pandemic and all its restrictions. But today, we rejoice in being able to come together in person to recognize our new president, to congratulate him, to bless him, and pledge our support as he works toward ensuring the sustainability of this institution to preserve the legacy of the Sisters of St. Dominic. This inauguration, Dr. Whalen, is an opportunity to renew and deepen the close relational ties of the university and the congregation and to pledge our ongoing commitment to its mission of promoting intellectual, spiritual, and aesthetical growth to a diverse population, welcoming all cultures 
and faith traditions. The Sisters of St. Dominic join you, Dr. Well, in, in this exciting ministry of educating women and men and in upholding the university's core values of respect, integrity, community, and excellence as you carry forward the rich heritage that has been entrusted to you. May God grant you the grace and courage to lead faithfully and fearlessly. Thank you, Sister Luella. Caldwell's faculty inspire our students in the classroom and throughout their lives. Dr. Benjamin Lammers, Professor of History and President of the Faculty Council, brings greetings on behalf of the faculty. Dr. Whelan, on behalf of the faculty of Caldwell University, it is my distinct privilege to welcome you as our new president. As a historian, I am naturally interested in the roots of things, and it is striking that in coming to Caldwell, you are returning to your roots. I'm speaking not of your roots in northern New Jersey, although those exist. Instead, I am speaking of your roots in small Catholic institutions of higher education, institutions whose history my colleague, Dr. Mullaney, so expertly outlined in her talk early this week. You received your undergraduate degree and also began your professional career at Mercyhurst University in Erie, Pennsylvania, founded by the Sisters of Mercy as a college for women 13 years before the founding of, as it was then, Caldwell College for Women. Thus, you have spent a significant portion of your educational and professional career in an environment suffused with values that we at Caldwell can recognize and appreciate. And you spoke powerfully of the influence Mercy, Mercyhurst had on you when you interviewed to become Caldwell's next president. Those of us who are committed to Caldwell's values and mission can take great comfort in your roots in an environment that so greatly resembles our own. Having been shaped by the tradition of Catholic colleges and universities, you will now help to shape our institution as we move forward in this challenging era for American higher education. The faculty of this university are eager to be your partners in this process, to hear your ideas, to offer our thoughts, to engage with you as we continue to fulfill the vision for Caldwell that was laid out by the Sisters of St. Dominic over 80 years ago. Thank you, Dr. Lammers. I would like to welcome back to campus all of the alumni who are present today. Thank you for supporting your alma mater and for being an integral part of our history. Next, Elaine Zabriskie, alumna from the class of 1973 and president of the Caldwell University Alumni Association, will extend wishes on behalf of the alumni. Nice to take the mask off, I have to say. Dr. Whelan, as president of the Alumni Association of Caldwell University, I would like to offer a few words of greeting to you on behalf of Caldwell's alumni community. We look forward to welcoming you to all aspects of our university life as doors and windows are finally open and we seek to find our new normalcy after a very unusual hiatus. As an alumna, I am awed at Caldwell's continuing transformation and evolution as new programs of study, new students, and a forward perspective are offered each year. I speak for all of the alumni as we offer our assistance to you as your strategy and goals for the university are imp implemented, and we extend to you a Caldwell welcome and si sincere congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Elaine. I would now like to call Andre St. Felix, our Director of the Educational Opportunity Fund, to the podium to give greetings on behalf of the staff. Good evening. 
My name is Andre St. Felix, EOF Director at Caldwell University. I am very pleased to be part of the team chosen to welcome the ninth president, Dr. Matthew Willen, to this prestigious Catholic establishment to fulfill his present calling. I welcome you and your family and together with the Caldwell community, the university will see new heights. I witness daily the transformation that access to higher education exudes in our students. It is even more profoundly seen in the eyes of the alumni and parents. Every time the alumni come back to visit, they are excited to share their success due to the knowledge attained, the human and spiritual development they experience at Caldwell University. Together, we will continue to serve and propel students to achieve success in every aspect of their lives. May God give you his grace, strength, and understanding to fulfill your present calling. Welcome, Dr. Matthew Willen. Thank you. Thank you, Andre. Next, Samantha Guerra, class of 2022, president of the Student Government Association and a nursing student will offer greetings on behalf of the students. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Samantha Guerra, and I am the president of the Student Government Association here, and it is my pleasure to be here today. On behalf of myself and the entire student body, we send a heartfelt congratulations to the Caldwell University's ninth president, Dr. Matthew Whalen. After having been with us for slightly over a year, Dr. Whalen is well known to us students. Becoming the president of a university during a global pandemic has its fair share of trials and tribulations. However, Dr. Whalen steps forward, putting our core beliefs of respect, integrity, community, and excellence at the forefront. Dr. Whalen brings renewed optimism and energy to this campus in all facets of the Caldwell University community. We thank him for introducing SOAR, student outreach and academic resources to help students with learning disabilities excel academically, the men's rugby team, and the women's acrobatics and tumbling, an emergency, emerging NCAA sport, as well as renovations throughout all of campus, including the lounge and Mother Joseph. We understand this past year has been full of hard work, meetings, tears of pain and joy, meetings, laughter, meetings, meals shared, leadership training, meetings, one-on-ones, and more meetings. I may or may not be exaggerating about the meetings, but Dr. Whalen, Thank you for your endless support for the Caldwell University students and community, and for all the care you have put into this special place. God bless you and thank you. Thank you, Samantha. Now the invocation was an unexpected surprise. We now have a planned surprise in the form of a musical interlude, a special surprise which we have kept under wraps for the last six months.
Thank you, Sarah. That was, for those of you uh, wondering, one of President Whalen's uh, daughters. And, uh, that was really wonderful. I, I, it, we almost should end this at that, quite frankly. It's <laughs> Thank you to all of you also who helped to keep that uh, secret uh, all these months. You no longer have to refer to this as the musical surprise when the president leaves the room. Next, I would like to again welcome members of the community to offer greetings. First, we have Sister Donna Siangio, alumna from the class of 1971, member of the Board of Trustees, and Chancellor of the Archdiocese of Newark, who will offer greetings. That was beautiful. And I have to follow you? <laughs> <laughs> it was absolutely stunning. I think it's something we all needed to hear right now. So I bring you blessings and greetings from the Archdiocese of Newark to the whole Caldwell University community of which you are a vital part of the Archdiocese of Newark. And for Dr. Whalen, I have a special greeting. Please accept my blessings, prayers, and congratulations to you, Dr. Matthew Whalen, as you celebrate your inauguration as the ninth president of Caldwell University. We are grateful for your leadership, especially over this past year, which has been so challenging during the COVID-19 pandemic. A key part of your leadership has been the ability of you and your cabinet to inspire students and faculty with joy and hope even when it seemed impossible. I pray that your ministry as president will bear much fruit and that Caldwell University will continue to thrive and be the place of higher learning, gospel values, and encouragement for all. May you continue, Dr. Whalen, to be inspired by St. Dominic and St. Catherine of Siena and the Sisters of St. Dominic of Caldwell as you spread the good news of Jesus Christ through this important mission. Sincerely yours in Christ the Redeemer, Cardinal Joseph W. Tobin, CSSR, Archbishop of Newark. Thank you, Sister Donna. We are honored that Lieutenant Governor Sheila Oliver is here with us today. Thank you for all the contributions you have made to the great state of New Jersey, and especially for all the hard work you have done over the past year and a half. It is my distinct honor to welcome to the podium Lieutenant Governor Sheila Oliver. Good afternoon um, to uh, the entire Caldwell University family. And uh, it's an honor and a privilege for me to be able to be here today as Dr. Whalen has his formal inaugural installation. Really an honor. And on behalf of Governor Murphy, um, he certainly wants to extend congratulations to you, Dr. Whalen, and uh, know that uh, we have an extreme dedication to higher education in our state. And while I'm here uh, representing the state of New Jersey, I am also here to share in this joyous occasion. I feel very close to this institution because in an earlier part of my career, I spent several years working here. I worked within the Educational Opportunity Fund program. Uh, Sister Patrice Werner was the president at the time. And it was nothing but pleasurable to come to this campus on a daily basis to interact with uh, faculty, administrators, and staff, and most importantly, the students. And many of the students that I interacted with during that period of time many of them I am still in contact with. And to show you what a Caldwell University education can do, two of my coworkers at that time 
One, uh, the Reverend Dr. Francis Tebout. Several weeks ago, I attended her installation as the first female pastor of St. John Baptist Church in Jersey City. The other person that I worked with at the time, who Dr. Um, who, who, who Sister Werner will remember, is Dr. Diane Hill, who is a vice chancellor at the Rutgers University in Newark. And I point those two graduates out uh, only to demonstrate the major contributions that this institution has been making to the state of New Jersey for decades. And I want to thank the entire university community for providing us with graduates who have gone on to assume leadership roles in their community, not just all over New Jersey, but with that throughout the country. Caldwell University's core values of respect, integrity, community, and excellence underpin the academic structure and campus life and culture here, encouraging students to bring those values out into the world and make a difference. These values are apparent to me each time I have the opportunity to visit the campus. Today's Caldwell is co-educational and proudly serves a diverse population of students from New Jersey, the United States, and around the globe. With the largest international population of students coming from Nepal and Ghana. I have learned that Caldwell is a Hispanic serving institution designated by the U.S. Department of Education Office of Post-Secondary Education. Caldwell was recently awarded nearly five million dollars in grant funding from the U.S. Department of Education to benefit Hispanic and low-income students who are planning for careers in science, math, and computer science. Many of Caldwell's undergraduate students are trailblazers in their own right, as they are the first in their families to attend a university. And Dr. Whalen, something that I think every president uh, at every higher ed institution in New Jersey would salivate over, and that is the fact that 99% of Caldwell students receive some form of financial aid. Governor Murphy and I understand the col that college affordability is the most common barrier to people pursuing a higher education. And uh, Dr. Whalen, as we continue to address that major issue in the state, I look forward to working with you and creating a relationship so we can ensure that Caldwell University is here for another 80 years. Uh, yeah. Dr. Whalen uh, is now uh, challenged and entrusted with the stewardship of this university. And I will tell you, every time I visit this campus and I think of uh, Dr. Blattner, uh, I am just amazed at the growth and the expansion that has happened here, the new facilities and the new programs. Dr. Whalen is going to be challenged with leading this university deeper into the 21st century. And, you know, we're in an age of technology and, uh, you know, many of our students are going to pursue careers in science and technology and engineering and math. But I think the major, major responsibility Dr. Whalen will continue to have is giving a full rounded liberal arts education to the students who pass through these doors. I am so pleased that Caldwell University is following in the same philosophy that a college education should be accessible and affordable to everyone. I join 
everyone in the university community in warmly welcoming Dr. Whalen to this position, and we wish him much success during his tenure. Thank you. Lieutenant Governor, thank you so much for those words of greeting. The community surrounding a university is an important part of our experience. We are fortunate to exist in the wonderful community of the borough of Caldwell. I would like to welcome Councilwoman Fran De Palma Iozzi to offer greetings on behalf of the borough. Good afternoon, Dr. Whalen, Board of Trustees, faculty, students, and guests. It's an honor to represent the borough of Caldwell on this exciting occasion, and I bring best wishes from Mayor Kelly and the Borough Council. And I'm also a choral director, and I just have to say bravo, brava, to Miss Whalen for that beautiful performance. Having met President Whalen several times and listened to him speak, both formally and informally, I must agree with Mayor Kelly when he stated, Matthew Whalen is a treasure, both to the university and to the borough, and bravo to those who brought him on. It was a superb choice. The council has prepared a proclamation that I would like to read now. Whereas Caldwell College, now Caldwell University, has been an important presence in our community for higher learning since 1939, and whereas since its inception in 1939 and its growth in university status in 2014, Caldwell University has remained true to its mission to promote intellectual, spiritual, and aesthetic growth to a diverse population and attracts students of diverse cultures and faith to Caldwell. And whereas Caldwell University's core values of respect, integrity, community, and excellence are an inspiration to not only its students and faculty, but our entire community. And whereas it is known that New Jersey has a rich academic history, municipalities and their local universities both stand to benefit from fostering relationships with Caldwell College and other universities. And whereas University President Dr. Matthew Whalen brings years of academic experience and leadership to Caldwell University, together with a commitment to furthering the university's mission and creating life-changing opportunities for university students. And whereas Dr. Whalen and his wife Kathy began their life together in Caldwell and have since followed a career path that has brought Dr. Whalen to leadership positions at Stony Brook University, along with positions on national higher education boards and associations, in addition, he has presented nationally and internationally on issues impacting higher education. And now, therefore, be it resolved that we, the mayor and governing body of the borough of Caldwell, wish to welcome Dr. Matthew Whalen back to Caldwell as the ninth and first male lay president of Caldwell University and look forward to working with him and all of Caldwell University toward a continuing commitment to the mutually beneficial relationship between the university and the borough. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councilwoman. Bringing greetings from the independent colleges and universities of New Jersey, of which we are proud to be a member, is its new president, Steve R. Reynolds Esquire. I, I thought I was coming here uh, for a presidential inauguration, but instead I show up at an Adele concert. <laughs> Unbelievable. Good afternoon. 
It's a great honor and privilege for me as the new president of the uh, Independent Colleges and Universities of New Jersey to both attend this wonderful event and to have a chance to talk about Dr. Whalen. Our organization provides political, scholarship fundraising, marketing, and other support to the 14 independent or private colleges and universities in the state, including this great university, as well as Bloomfield College. And I, and I see in front of us the wonderful president, Dr. Marquita Evans, here today. Centenary University, Drew University, Felician University, and I see Admiral Crawford is with us here today as well. Welcome. <laughs> FDU, Georgian Court, Monmouth University, Princeton, Ryder, St. Elizabeth University, and I should note I attended um, an inauguration ceremony yesterday, an historic one of Dr. Gary Crosby at that university up in Morris Township, St. Elizabeth. Extraordinary. Seton Hall, St. Peter's, and Stevens Institute. This is without any question the best job I've ever had, and I've had a few. Because I get to meet and try to help incredible students, like in the back of this room, administrators, and exceptionally smart and committed leaders like Dr. Whalen. I've only been in this job for a little over two months, but I've had the opportunity now to meet almost all of our school's presidents, including Matt. We met in his office about a month ago and discussed the difficult issues facing all colleges and universities in New Jersey and across the country. How he hopes to deal with those challenges and his plan for serving the mission of Caldwell University. I can assure you all, he clearly gets it. And isn't it fantastic that the Board of Trustees was able to bring this fellow Jersey boy back home, back to the Garden State, or as I prefer to call it, the Education State. I say that because some of you may know that we were recently identified by the U.S. News and World Report as the number one state in the country for education. So it's great to have Matt back after all those years in exile in Long Island. <laughs> now I have nothing against Long Island, mind you, although I should note that New York was ranked a distant 16th <laughs> in that study, but it's sure good to have you back here where you belong, Matt. I came away with my meeting uh, with Matt with the clear belief that he has already demonstrated that he is the perfect leader for this university at a time which is probably best described as an imperfect time. All universities are faced with multiple unprecedented challenges as the value proposition of higher education in New Jersey and across the country is under heavy scrutiny. And the impact of COVID on students and schools has been dramatic and will continue to be uh, for the short term at least. It will take a leader with boundless energy, enthusiasm, integrity, and vision to serve this extraordinarily and critically important institution. And I am convinced that Matt possesses all those traits in abundance. So I congratulate the members of the Board of Trustees for having the insight to select a president who is the right person in the right time at the right place. And to Dr. Whalen, I wish you great luck. And I offer you our commitment as an organization to help you and your students reach their full potential. Thanks. Thank you, Steve. Next, I would like to welcome Commissioner Carlos Pomares, an alumnus from the class of 1993 and Vice President of the Essex County Board of Commissioners. Good afternoon, everyone. When you say good afternoon, your response is good afternoon, everybody. All right, let's wake up a little bit. I mean, I can't follow her. I mean, that's incredible. Um, President Whelan, on behalf of the Essex County Board of Commissioners, our county executive, and all of us at Essex County, um, we bring greetings and salutations. We're very excited for this day. Most importantly, on behalf of class of 1993, back when they called us Caldwell College, we bring our greetings and salutations. I want to give a special shout out to two of my mentors who for, I dare say, 30 years or so have been uh, following me, and that's uh, Bob Mann in communications and Dr. Marie Mullaney, who,
If you have had them as students, you know they are excellent. If you have them as colleagues, you know they are excellent. They have been uh, nurturing me for 30 years. And um, one of the most humbling and, and, and honorable things that's happened to me is to have my mentors welcome me as one of their own. Although I think they're still going to grade me on my performance after this. I didn't prepare remarks uh, because I wanted to share a special memory and story that I have. So I came in 1989, back in the Stone Ages, for you guys in the back wearing the red shirts. And at that time, Caldwell had just gone co-ed. And not only was I one of the very few guys, I was even a smaller number of Latinos. And uh, to be honest with you, coming from Hudson County, I was a little bit concerned, feeling a little out of place at Caldwell. And that wasn't the case, not only because of great mentors that I would come to have, but also the staff and, of course, my fellow classmates. And uh, as my good friend, uh, Lieutenant Governor Oliver mentioned, I'm so proud of the fact that this has been designated as a Hispanic serving school. But well before that designation, I, along with other people, represented that. And uh, we're very proud of the direction. So the story that I have was based on an assignment that Bob Mann probably doesn't remember, but he gave us as an interview project. I know, it's 30 years, Bob, but I can't remember what I had for breakfast this morning. 30 years ago, Bob Mann gave us this uh, assignment to interview someone. So I shot for the stars, and I reached out to then-President Sister Vivian Jennings. And I'm like, eh, it's probably a fat chance I'll get that interview. Sure enough, she uh, responded. I walked into her office. She truly had an open-door policy. I said, I'd like to talk to the president. And uh, yeah, sure, come on in. And so I said, uh, sister, I, I'd like to interview you for a class project that I have about the future of Caldwell. And so we set it up and you know, I would later have that interview. And uh, I think it was that interview that really made me realize that I wasn't just a student at Caldwell College at the time. It made me realize that when I finished here, I would be part of a larger community. And I never quite thought of it in those terms. When you're a student, you're worried about your studies, uh, you're worried about dating. I was uh, lucky enough with that six women to one guy ratio, I found my wife here. <laughs> By the way, greetings of class of 1992, or else my wife will kill me if I don't say that. My wife, I met my wife Natasha here. And uh, it was a great opportunity. And that interview, over time, really meant more to me. So fast forward 30 some odd years, Dr. Mullaney has sent me a number of interns at all the museums that I had worked at. She had followed me in different museums. I continued to talk to Bob Mann, and they were always interested in my career. And uh, I, have, I was nominated for the Veritas Award. And I think, uh, I was shocked, um, but at the root of that, that award is all about the core values that we share. If you look in your book, right, they're here in the program. They are respect, integrity, community, and excellence. So I, I got a letter, a handwritten letter from Sister Vivian Jennings. I didn't think she'd remember me, but she reached out to congratulate me on the award and my career in museum work, which started right here in Caldwell, the President Grover Cleveland birthplace, thanks to this school. And I was just floored that she would even remember me and uh, was honored and touched. I think what she saw in me and so many of people who graduated and have moved on and added a few years and a few pounds to ourselves over the years is that we were part of that vision that she shared with me on that college interview. Those core values of respect and integrity and excellence and community. I was at that moment the, the embodiment of that for her in that little note that she wrote to me. I'm sure I was in a long list of people who embody that. As I stand before you, for you guys in the back with the red shirts, that's what we're looking from you. That's what we want from you. That's what we expect from you. That's what we'll know we'll get from you. And so, Mr. President, you uh, inherit some pretty uh, 
formidable reigns here. I, uh, I know that you will work your hardest. I know you will follow in the excellent footsteps of Sister Vivian and Sister Patrice and Nancy Blattner who preceded you and you're here making history. Today is the first male lay person in this capacity. And uh, we've come a long way. But we still have a lot to do, right? We still have a lot to do. And uh, since my time, we have new buildings. We added the word university to the end of that, which by the way, my wife got her master's here. She's grateful for all that work that everyone did. Um, we're better recognized, our class sizes are larger, and, and you have some fantastic programs. I see it from my county seat. I know Sheila sees it from her state seat. And so um, you have awesome responsibilities, and I know that I speak for everyone in this room when we say we're going to be here to support you, to help you. Sometimes play devil's advocate, but that's OK, um, because there are going to be some challenges ahead. But in your most difficult of times, that's when you can dig deep and find that this community will be here to support you as it has for me. So I wanted to just share that before I read for you the bunch of whereas's, whereas's, and whereas's. So uh, I'm no longer as young as Bob and Marie may think. I need these now. So on behalf of the Essex County Board of Commissioners, Whereas for more than 82 years, Caldwell University has promoted intellectual, spiritual, and aesthetic growth to a diverse population, like me, and welcome all cultures and faith and traditions. The university, inspired by St. Dominic de Guzman and Catholic Heritage, has transformed students' lives by preparing them through liberal arts and professional studies to think critically, pursue truth, and contribute to a just society. And whereas, Matthew Whelan is a first-generation Pell-eligible grant student who attended Catholic schools and developed a love for small college, Catholic colleges and their commitment to reaching out to deserving and underrepresented students in higher education. And whereas Matthew Whelan was born and raised in Dunville, I'm not going to hold you accountable to that, he was born in a family of eight. I think your parents deserve this and attended St. Mary's School in Morris Catholic High School in Denville and Mercyhurst University in Erie, Pennsylvania, and where he's earned a master's degree from William Patterson University, a doctorate in educational leadership from Dowling College in Shirley, New York, and where he is a devout Catholic to further, committed to furthering the mission of Caldwell University and offering the student opportunities for social mobility. He and his wife, Kathy, lived in the borough of Caldwell when they first married and are excited to be back, especially with a young daughter with that incredible voice. So let it be resolved that the Essex County Board of County Commissioners hereby commends Dr. Matthew Whelan for being honored as the ninth president of Caldwell University during this inauguration. Congratulations, sir. Thank you, Commissioner. To offer our final greetings for this portion, I would like to welcome Dr. Linda Luciano, alumna from the class of 1978 and chair of the Caldwell University Board of Trustees. Thank you. And thank you, Sarah. No one knows your name, so I have to tell everyone it's your name. As chair of the Board of Trustees, and on behalf of the board, I would like to offer a few words of welcome to Dr. Matthew Whelan. Dr. Whelan, it has been a pleasure working with you for the past 15 months as we continue the legacy of the Sisters of St. Dominic. As I know you are aware from our conversations, Cola University is a very special place. As an alumna of Cola College for Women, I have had the privilege of experiencing Caldwell from the perspective of a student, an alumna, a trustee for 17 years, and as the chair of the board. Each of these perspectives has taught me a lesson. As a student 
I learned the importance of commitment and hard work. As an alumna, I learned about the power of community and giving back. And as a trustee, I learned that at Coldwell, we offer life-changing opportunities for our students. Dr. Whalen, your presidency will be marked by the lessons you inspire. May they be rooted in our core values. May they strengthen our community. And may they continue to change the lives of students for years to come. Congratulations. Thank you, Dr. Luciano. To commemorate this historic occasion and celebrate Dr. Whalen's presidency, senior Samantha Ashton will recite her own original poem. Samantha is a double major in psychology and English. She is from Colonia, New Jersey, and she's on the Caldwell, Caldwell volleyball team. It's my pleasure to introduce Samantha Ashton to recite To Be a Caldwell Cougar. To be a Caldwell Cougar means having an appetite for success. Eyes of amber locked in on the prey, lurking in silence through the desert terrain. We observe opportunity from afar, waiting patiently on our hind legs as our mouths begin to water in anticipation, waiting for the perfect time to pounce, to sing our long and tapered fangs into the tender meat that is our aspirations. To be a Caldwell Cougar means having a desire for exploration, both physically and spiritually, as it is in our nomadic nature to venture beyond boundaries. With long and prideful strides, we prowl through the Rocky Mountains until we reach our highest levels of intellect. We chase the scent of liberation that burns at the tip of our snout. To be a Caldwell Cougar means having a skill for survival. As one of the most adaptable mammals, the cougar thrives in any environment. We know how to come out on top. Enduring the heat beating down in the desert, or the pressure that comes with high altitudes, venturing through moist tangled vines with our sharp and thick boned talons that help us to claw through adversity. To be a Caldwell cougar means being a member of the pack. As cougars, we come together. Despite being solitary animals, a cougar is a protector one species among a variety of creatures, cuddling up for warmth in harsh winters, sprinting side by side with tails swinging in the wind. We depend on our feline family for safety and for comfort. And today, we welcome Dr. Whalen to hunt for the success of our students and staff, to embrace individual growth, to help us go through any struggle that comes our way, to create an environment that is welcoming and inclusive, to be a Caldwell Cougar. Thank you. Thank you, Samantha. We will now move into the formal portion of our installation ceremony. During this portion, Dr. Whalen will be administered the charge of office and will be presented with the chain of office, the university's charter, and the university mace to formally charge Dr. Whalen with the responsibilities of the office of the president of Caldwell University. Dr. Linda Luciano and members of the board of trustees of Caldwell University, it is my honor to present to you for investiture as ninth president of Caldwell, Dr. Matthew Whalen. As chair of the Board of Trustees of Colwell University, it is my duty and privilege to install Dr. Matthew Whalen as the ninth president of Colwell University, to minister the charge of office and invest Dr. Whalen with a chain of office on behalf of the Board of Trustees. We, the Board of Trustees of Colwell University, charge you, Dr. Matthew Whalen, to uphold the vision and mission of Colwell University, enshrined in our seal, our charter, our history, and to carry forth that mission 
with the same determination, strength, and faith exhibited by Mother Joseph Dunn and the Sisters of St. Dominic. We charge you to honor our history by defending and supporting the liberal arts and professional studies and preserving the university's commitment to prepare students to think critically, pursue truth, and contribute to a just society. Dr. Whalen, we charge you to embrace the Dominican heritage and its four pillars of prayer, study, community, and service, and further charge you to embody and promote the core values of respect, integrity, community, and excellence. Finally, we charge you to honor the legacy of those who came before you, to strengthen our community, and to work for the growth and enrichment of our university so that its mission thrives for years to come. Do you, Dr. Matthew Whalen, agree to accept this charge and promise to faithfully perform the duties of the office of the president of Cole University. I do. I now present to you the chain of office. Its medallion is the distinctive seal of the presidential office. Throughout your tenure as president, it should be worn with your academic regalia and serve as both a visual reminder of the duties with which you have been entrusted and a symbolic reminder of all those who carry those responsibilities before you. May you wear it proudly. I now ask Brian Aloy, Vice Chair of the Board of Trustees, to present Dr. Whalen with the Caldwell University Charter. Dr. Whalen, as Vice Chair of the Board of Trustees, I present you with this charter, which serves as a symbol of our history and your commitment to upholding the legacy of Caldwell University. I now ask Caldwell University's eighth president, Dr. Nancy Blotner, to present Dr. Whalen with the Caldwell University Mace. Dr. Whalen, as the former president of Caldwell University, I present you with this mace. It is the traditional symbol of leadership and the authority granted to you as the university's president. Upon you falls the responsibility of leading Caldwell University in all its endeavors. May it guide you well. With these symbols of the presidency now bestowed upon you, the Board of Trustees confirms your appointment and officially installs you as Caldwell University's ninth president. I shouldn't have paused because now you're going to clap. Cole University and friends, I now present to you President Matthew Whalen.
Congratulations, President Whelan. It is now my pleasure to introduce to you David Armstrong, President of St. Thomas University, who will have the honor of introducing President Whelan. Buenos dias, Bishop Cruz, Lieutenant Governor, President Blattner, the Caldwell University community, especially the faculty, staff, and students, and the trustees, and of course, President Whalen, First Lady Kathy, the Whalen family and friends, and a special welcome to the, all the wonderful sisters of St. Dominic. All of us that are Catholic know that, uh, and I'll say this, I, and sometimes some of my nun friends get mad at me, but the sisters are the soldiers of the Catholic Church. If anything needs to be done around the world, in health, education, mission, whatever it is, you send a nun to get it done. Right? Your mission statement talks about how welcoming you are. My wife, Leslie and I have felt that warmth and that welcome in our several days here. Uh, with the symposium yesterday, all the events, the student events, it's been spectacular. And I do want to give a shout out to the choir at Mass today, the ensemble here, and of course Sarah. Let's give them all a round of applause. You cannot have arts without the liberal, you cannot have arts without, or you cannot have the liberal arts without the arts, right? So it's so great to see all that talent. I'm Dave Armstrong, the 10th president of the ST, St. Thomas University in Miami, Florida, and so you are welcome for the great weather that Leslie and I brought up. But today I am here and honored to have a better name. I get to be called Matt's friend. There are three reasons why Dr. Whalen and I are connected. How did a stubby Husky football player from Cleveland, Ohio, get to be best friends with a soccer player from New Jersey, Northern New Jersey? First, it was a transformative experience at Mercyhurst College, now Mercyhurst University, a place just like Caldwell University, and the charism of the Sisters of Mercy. Dr. William P. Garvey, our president, who has since passed, our mutual mentor, Dr. Andy Roth, we learned what it was to be, what it was to be a student and then an employee at a faith-based, small faith-based institution. Matt and I served on Mercy Her Student Government together, and I met my beautiful wife Leslie there too. We had that outnumbered thing too. We, it was like four to one, you know, four women to one guy, so that's how I did so well. And definitely, Matt and I outkicked our coverage with Kathy and Leslie, that's for sure. Second, we both come from big Irish Catholic families. Mine, family of seven, and for Matt, brothers and sisters, there was eight of them. Everything that we are, the values that we have, all come from being part of those faith-filled, fun-filled, crazy families. Matt picked me as his best man, and after meeting his brothers and all his friends, to this day, is one of the greatest achievements of my life that he selected me as his best man for his wedding to Kathy. And you measure the man by his family. Kathy, or the Griff as we call her, I see her parents, the Griffins here. Sarah, Mary Kate, and Eileen, such a beautiful and supportive family. So Caldwell, you didn't get just one Waylon, you got them all. But most important, our parents taught us that education is the great equalizer. Both of our parents came from nothing. They were completely self-made. But they made great sacrifices so those 15 kids could go through Catholic grade school, Catholic high school, and many of us through the Catholic colleges. Because of our parents 
As Matt and I stand before you today as first generation presidents, and Matt, your mo I knew this was going to be a tough one. Your mother Marilyn and your father Joe are definitely here today, and they are so, so proud of you. Let's talk about Matt as a president. There was a seminal article written by Jeff Salingo, higher ed expert, in 2013 when MOOCs came online. We remember the massive open online courses that were going to be free, and that was going to be the big disruption in higher education. And Jeff Salingo wrote that out of the 4,000 colleges and universities in this country, only four to 500 have the fiscal strength to overcome that disruption and survive. That's scary. And this, he said the schools that are most in danger are small, faith-based, liberal arts institutions that are tuition-driven, under-endowed. That puts the target squarely on the back of all the schools that we have worked for and served in St. Thomas University in Miami, Florida, and Caldwell. And then what happened? The pandemic. We survived the MOOCs, and then the pandemic hit. And now you are seeing it again. Schools are closing, schools are merging. We're losing mission for a lot of wonderful institutions. So I'm happy to tell you, you have the right guy. You have a turnaround guy. Because of our background, and we were cut from the cloth of Mercy Hearst, from Dr. Garvey and Dr. Roth, we know what to do. I've worked at five colleges and universities, including our alma mater. The four other schools I worked at, when I was in charge of enrollment and turning the school around, each one of those schools was either in dire financial straits or was going to close. My first phone call, always, was to Dr. Whalen. And after his visit and assessment, then and only then did I know my next move to save that university. He is competent in all things higher ed. Balance. Balance. That's my favorite word since the 2016 election. Balance. When Matt and I were in Mercier Student Government, I was the president, he was the vice president, and I was the guy that ran through the china shop, broke everything, ran through the brick wall, made a mess. That's what I did. And Matt was the one that came and cleaned everything up and made sure that everything worked out. Such balance. I was on the roller coaster, he was on the merry-go-round. Merry he made sure we got things done. Not only did we hold the two highest offices as students, we also ended up winning the two highest awards at graduation. And Matt received the Sister Carolyn Herman Award. And for Bishop Cruz, if you heard his homily today, the Sister Carolyn Herman Award for service. Matt has been a servant leader his whole life. At this past commencement in May at St. Thomas University, I made this statement. 24-hour news and social media are intentionally and purposefully destroying this country for ratings and clickbait. I'm going to say it again. 24-hour news and social media are purposefully trying to destroy and divide this country for ratings and clickbait. We have a responsibility. We have to build bridges. We have to be bridge builders. We all need to build bridges in our politics. We all need to build bridges in race. We all need to build bridges in our faith and with our families. That is our mission, not the division. We need bridge builders. And Matt is the best bridge builder I know. He is a consensus maker. When we used to work at Mercyhurst over the summer for maintenance and we used to paint uh, dorm rooms and stuff, we used to talk about our dreams. Matt wanted to work in the FBI. I wanted to be a corporate litigator on Wall Street. But we kept on saying, you know, it'd be cool to work at our college someday. It'd be cool to be a college president. So we made a bet. Whoever would become college president first? Well, I won. <laughs> you still owe me that beer. But I'll tell you this. Caldwell University won the prize. 
Caldwell University actually won the prize. Because I always believed that some lucky, lucky university was going to get Matt as their president. And you are that lucky university. How am my talks at St. Thomas University? I say, God bless you all and go Bobcats. But obviously, today's going to be different. And I would be remiss if I didn't say this. Today, I'm a Cougar. But on December 11th, when Coach Carino brings the Cougars down to St. Thomas University to play my Bobcats, Coach, you better have won that uh, record from New Jersey wins or whatever before you come down, because I am not cheering for you down at St. Thomas University. So I'm telling you that right now. But today we cheer for the Cougars. I leave you with this. Dr. Whalen is all about professional competence. He is all about family. He is all about faith. And he is most certainly a ser servant leader. He is most certainly a bridge builder. And he certainly has balance. But you will see firsthand his commitment to Catholic education, to Caldwell, and the wonderful legacy of the Sisters of St. Dominic. So on behalf of all your fellow presidents across the country and the Mercyhurst alumni, I congratulate you, President Whalen. And so God bless the Caldwell community and all present today. God bless President Whalen and Kathy. God bless the whole Whalen clan. And of course, go Cougars! And now I have the distinct pleasure and distinct honor to introduce the ninth president of Caldwell University, Dr. Matthew Whalen. So you'll bear with me as I fish my glasses out of my pocket. Um, as I do, I'll just say one thing to my dear friend of 40 years. Uh, he may have got there first, but I got the best. <laughs> and so thank you everyone, and first to the Sisters of St. Dominic, who entrusted to us this wonderful legacy. I offer you my thanks and a very, very warm welcome to be here today. It took the ever-present, really very real persistence of Mother Joseph Dunn to push Caldwell College to fruition over a series of five or six years. And in 1939, Caldwell College for Women was founded. And the sisters have been present with us ever since. They remain with us as teachers, as faculty, as students. They remain with us as advisors. They remain with us as board members. They remain with us as alumni. They are ever present at this university. Mother's jo Mother Joseph's vision is, was, and always will continue to be present at Caldwell University. Today, sisters, we are here because of you. And we thank you for that. And we owe you a debt of gratitude. And to the bishop this morning, all of the priests, Lieutenant Governor, you are welcome back here anytime, and we will look forward to having you. To Cora Present, the representative from Congresswoman Mikey Sherrill's office, to Governor Cody, to the council of the borough of Caldwell, to our board, alumni, friends, faculty, staff, a special welcome to all of you, and a special welcome to my distinguished colleagues, all of the presidents and delegates who have joined us here today, and a special welcome to our past presidents, both Nancy Blotner and Sister Patrice Warner. And last but not least, to those I took this position for most, 
They're sitting right back there, our students. I thank all of you for the honor and privilege of serving as the ninth president of Caldwell University. First and foremost, I want to thank just a few more people. Now remember, I have a large family, um, many of whom have assisted me along, along, along my journey to Caldwell and through the last 16 months. It's a bit delayed for inauguration, but I want to say thank you for all you've done as I begin what I'm calling my second first year, a year which will be defined by infinite possibilities. So to a few people who have supported me since birth, um, largely the first three or four rows over here, um, sometimes using humor, sometimes using nudges, sometimes using elbows, uh, or more forceful means, we won't get into those, as we de debated important family issues, such as whose soccer team was better, whose socks were whose, um, or during the more meaningful debates, that, such as who got the last piece of pizza or the penultimate debate about who had to clean up. We were eight children growing up in a very tight family of two parents in Denville, New Jersey, just up the road, just about 10 miles up the road to my five brothers and two sisters, Joe, Chris, Tim, Kathleen, Pete, Maureen, Daniel. Get everyone? Thank you for everything you've done. And to your 25 children, my nieces and nephews, all of you keep reaching for the stars, folks, and uh, you'll accomplish your goals. <clears throat> so I've read this about five times, and I haven't gotten real good at it yet, so just bear with me. Our mother and father would be very proud. Um, they would be a little surprised because it was at times assumed I would not make it out of sixth grade. Um, but they did provide us all with the constant love and support and the tough love and support, which was key to our success. We needed it all through our lives. And we know we call on that support from beyond the gates of heaven yet today. And we know that they're looking down on us. So uh, thank you, Mom and Dad. <clears throat> so we know they're watching. So I've also been blessed by the presence of another very special woman, my aunt, my godmother, Aunt Mary Rewellen, who's been with us since all those years ago. My godmother was always for, there for all of us for an extra communion money, a little clothing on our backs, or a little communion outfit, whatever we needed. And she still invites us, believe it or not, to her shore house every summer, and we invade for Whalen Family Beach Week. She is, as they say, very happy to see us come. And, and she's happy to see us go. Um, we love you, Aunt Reed. Thank you. <laughs> 25 years ago, I decided, my wife decided, and, and more importantly, uh, her parents decided that we would take a trip along Walton Lane, and we decided to be one big family. We moved in together. And it's been a wonderful trip all those years. Art Mary Lou, thank you. You are an inspiration to everybody who know you. And your two sons, who keep us laughing from coast to coast as they write and publish books and do scripts and television. Um, they keep us laughing and crying too, so God bless them. I am almost done. Without the beauty, grace, and humor I've seen and felt in my life to three beautiful daughters. Sarah. <clears throat> Mary Kate and Eileen all of whom continue to stun me with their beauty inside and out. I would be remiss not to say thank you for all the humor you continue to eject into my life, much of it, and appropriately so, at my expense, because apparently they don't like jet dad jokes. I love you guys. Couldn't be more proud of all of you that you've accomplished and all you have yet to accomplish. You've given me so many life lessons. And don't worry, I've got some more dad jokes for you I'm working on. Finally, to the persons kept me grounded, humored, loved, and motivated through it all, my beautiful wife, Kathy, of 28 years. We began, our, we began our journey to Caldwell 28 years ago when we returned from a honeymoon and moved into an apartment right down the road from here, 507 Bloomfield Avenue, right here in Caldwell. She was at the time a waitress, going to school at another local institution, getting her teaching degree. She was a waitress at the Cloverleaf. She finished her teaching degree, 
She's now a mother, a teacher, a wife, and a friend. Sweetheart, none of this is possible without you. Um, your love, humor, your support, a lot of your reminders, and uh, you're a super mom, super wife, and super friend, and I love you more deeply every day. There are so many more who have helped me. Many of them are here today, but I feel I need to keep the train moving. The, li the list is literally too long to do justice to, and I mean that. But I know who you all are, um, and I say thank you. Why am I here? You heard a lot about my speech today from many of the people who did their research, so I, I'm going to try and shorten up a little bit so we don't get too repetitive. But to answer this, I need to go back to my roots. While some of my siblings and friends attended much larger, more well-known universities, I did choose to attend Mercyhurst College, nestled right up there in Erie, Pennsylvania, on the shores of Lake Erie, 26 miles across from Canada. It was a college run by the Sisters of Mercy, a place very much like Caldwell University, and I found it the perfect fit for me. It was a place where I could not hide a place where faculty sought me out purposefully, a place where I was engaged both inside and outside the classroom to assist in my academic, my personal, my spiritual, and my professional development. So I once ran into a teacher, Peter Benico, who I emailed this year, a class who I said, um, let me just say this, I missed a class on a nice spring day in Erie. We won't go into the reasons why. Um, he gently helped me see the way to the importance of showing up to being present and to contributing. And I became a better student from that day on. The faculty helped to guide me and to hone me and develop my skills as a young researcher, as a scholar, as a professional. They also helped me with the mission to serve others and teach me the importance of that. And there was a person very instrumental in that, Dr. Andrew Roth, who I hope is watching then Dean of Admissions at Mercyhurst College, now President Emeritus of Notre Dame College of Ohio and former interim president of St. Bonaventure University, Andy can lay claim to no fewer than six employees who have gone on to senior and executive positions in academics, enrollment, administration at colleges and universities across the country. Two of them are presidents. You heard from one already, and now you'll hear from me. Andy was the embodiment of what it meant to teach, both in the classroom and for profession. I still rely on him for advice. Thank you, Andy. I knew after spanning a number of institutions at the American Higher Education Complex, my last school was a 27,000 person research institution, a tier one research institution with a $2.2 billion budget, a hospital, 605 hospital bed attached to it. I worked at that institution for 15 years across a number of areas. I worked at Mercyhurst College, a school of less than 2,200. And I knew that all those schools I attended in between, from Mercyhurst to Stony Brook University, I wanted one day to return to my roots and be able to give back to those wonderful things that I discovered at Mercyhurst College. What we do here is special. Caldwell University is special. Small universities, small Catholic universities are special. We need them. We had a seminar yesterday on the importance of spirituality in assisting students in their education. We do not work with 2,200 students. We work with 2,200 individuals, one person at a time, and all of the potential they bring with them. The faculty, our amazing faculty, you can stand with the best of them, folks. And I commit to you today that I am doing everything I can to do better for you and with you as we raise up Caldwell University. The faculty and the staff will invest their personal time in research to help the students. Our staff are phenomenal. They'll stay after. They'll work on their own time. They'll stop students who miss class, just like me, and explain to them the importance of showing up of getting involved, of participating. This is a place where the faculty go the extra mile. They'll show up the research presentations, the art, the art uh, exhibits, the concerts. 
This is a place where people work together to bring out the best potential in our students so that those students can reach their very own infinite possibility. No matter what their dreams, we're here to serve you. Over the last year, by successfully working together, we did just that. Our faculty were phenomenal. They pivoted on a dime, and initially under the leadership of Dr. Blotner, and then quickly, as I came here in July, having signed my contract three weeks before COVID, arriving here in the middle of it, it was a different experience than I expected. But we handled the COVID crisis and all of the uncertainty it brought with it through the hard work and dedication of these people, the faculty, of the staff, the staff were phenomenal. Of the students, you are phenomenal students. We owe you a debt of gratitude for showing up and coming back. And everyone worked together amidst this ambiguity, ambiguity to constantly changing rules, to deal with the constantly changing regulations that we were all faced with, all of these presidents in New Jersey were faced with, and we had to pivot quite often. Starting as a, as a president and as a new president, any time is difficult. Many of you can attribute uh, that or attest to that. Our journey and your journey was no, no less difficult than mine. No one had it easy and it was further hampered by the onset of COVID. There was no roadmap. There's no plan in place. You don't pull something off the shelf, how to deal with a worldwide pandemic. But together we managed. And I think it was a little bit akin to what early explorers must have felt. They knew which direction they wanted to go, but they had no map. They didn't know what worked. There was no tried and true path to success. So we did what people do. We tried things, and if they didn't work, we put our heads down and tried something new. We work hard, often through the nights, to understand the best direction for our students. We scaled obstacles, we scaled hurdles, and before long, we arrived to where we are today. We never closed. Larger universities across the country had to close, send their students home, no on-campus learning. Caldwell and many of our institutions never did that. And that's because small institutions are the little engines that could. We are the people who figure it out because our students are worth it, our faculty are worth it, and our staff are worth it. And because the legacy that we've been bequeathed is worth it. And so we did what St. Francis of Assisi said, first do what's necessary, and then do what's possible. And soon, you will be doing the impossible. And thank you to all of you for doing the impossible. And so as I enter my second first year, a year which will allow so many here to pursue their very own version of their infinite possibility, I want to focus on four things, and I will run through those quickly. First, we are going to secure a financial footing under Caldwell befitting the very best universities and befitting our status as a first class, best value, leader in social mobility, best undergraduate teaching university as defined by US News. Being a leader in social mobility is important. That is helping students come in at the lowest income quintiles and moving them towards the top. That is an important thing for those students, for their families, and for society as a whole. And we must do that through an entrepreneurial spirit and nimbleness, which has not always been prevalent in higher education. But let me tell you this, we can, I know we can, and we must. I also know we must. The times demand it. I know we can, den can do it. I know we will do it. And I will be there with you, building that bridge every step of the way. The challenges facing higher education, specifically small institutions and specifically small Catholic institutions, they have never been greater or more pronounced. We're facing a tsunami of change, demographic decline, technological advances, outdated funding models, initiatives designed for public good, which sometimes can create difficult situations for those members of the public who choose to attend private institutions in the state. And those are inadvertent designs. 
I am firmly committed to working with the state, and I know this, they are firmly committed to working with us, and so we will double down on our efforts to work with you so that we can help the citizens of the state of New Jersey. And I double down on that today. We also know this, there are those who believe strongly in what we do. They have witnessed the change, the infinite possibilities that come with the Caldwell education. Yamin Thapa entered here, a budding biologist, spent 10 weeks at MIT this summer in an internship program. A quasi -se -du. spent time this year in an internship at Credit Suisse, one of the most difficult internships in business to get. He left with a job offer. Akwazi and Yaman, you are just two of, of the infinite possibilities. <clears throat> People have stepped up to help us. The faculty have stepped up. Staff have stepped up as alumni, as friends. They've been there where and when we've needed them to be so that we can continue our mission, the mission started by the sisters to educate our students, the majority of whom are first generation, Pell eligible, as I and my brothers and sisters were, coming from lower socio and economic income reigns, ranges, so that we can educate our students through the liberal arts and pre-professional programs to think critically, pursue truth, and listen to this, and to contribute to a just society. I cannot think of a more powerful and relevant mission than the one we've been given today. Second, we will invest in our faculty and staff. We will invest in our faculty in critical areas. We must do that now. We do have some good news on this. As the Lieutenant Governor said, we've recently been awarded a $5 million STEM grant to support emerging uh, Hispanic education in STEM areas. With this, we will, we will be allowed to hire four new faculty, renovate labs and classrooms with new equipment, recruit an, an additional bilingual admissions counselor, a bilingual advisor, a bilingual student navigator who can help students who may not have the resources learn all about what it is they need for higher education. We'll develop internships and training and partnerships wherever we can so that our students and students at other institutions can find their way to a successful higher education, no matter where it is that they do it. This grant will allow us to reach those students and reach many, many more of them. We are already on our way to do this, but we must do more. We've also, through the good efforts of Governor Cody, been the recipient of a $250,000 grant to design an art therapy pilot program to assist students as they come out of the pandemic with the social isolation, some of the anxiety skills they're facing. And this program is under study right now and about to be launched. We'll be assisting people in the greater Essex County area as well as the community. That's the essence of a college and a community working together. We thank you all for all you've done and all you'll do for us in the future. Third, we must reach out and provide more opportunities for student success. Access is meaningless without success. We must bring these students in. We must get them across the finish line. That must be an ever-present goal. We are seeking out new ways to invest in student success through technology, through new outreach to them, but also new push-in efforts to find those students who need help so that we can catch them before they fall. We're using data. We are, I have three brothers who are CPAs in this little group over here. Um, I was gonna be the guy who didn't work with numbers. Um, all I do all day is work with numbers. But every number behind every one of those numbers is a person, that's how I look at it. Our numbers aren't just numbers for dollars or cents, and we need that, trust me, that's important. But our numbers represent people and opportunity and lost opportunity perhaps, and that's what we're here to try and fix. We want to increase our four and six year graduation rates and ensure students who start at Caldwell finish at Caldwell with a degree in their hand and a job on the line. To our students, 
We owe you that. That will be our commitment to you. So we have the people to do so. We're marshalling their efforts and their creativity right now. And we're going to be sure that every one of you is presented with the opportunity to succeed, to find your own, very own version of your infinite possibility. Fourth, we must bring our infrastructure up to date. It's beautiful buildings and new buildings, thanks to the guidance of the last few presidents and the, and the uh, benefactors that we've had. We have already invested in an updated classrooms. We designed and constructed one new student lounge and study space. And we renovated one other student, lo student lounge. This summer, we qu quickly installed Bloomberg terminals in a classroom so our students would have access to the very best technology they need and the very best education they need to compete in a rapidly changing business world. So that when they leave here, they can go on and get the best jobs and do well and then contribute back to their communities. We've done so much more. We've replaced our core and edge computing systems so students can be connected. We have a laptop loaner program for students who can't afford laptops. We look to assist students with cable, cable bills so that they can have internet connections in their homes if they cannot afford one. We are looking at so many other projects. We're bringing our nursing simulation la uh, dolls up to date. And for each of these projects, there's a bill attached and we know there's people out there who will help us. And we've done so much of this already, but we must and we're going to do more. And we must do it to ensure that these faculty who spend far beyond required hours here sometimes have the very best that they need to give our students the very best that they need. Again, these faculty stand with the very best. So they need these resources and others to provide our students with the best success. They're champions of our students and I want to recognize you for that. We have a burgeoning athletic program. Someone told me there's a basketball practice tonight at 5 p.m., so I'm going to hurry. Um, it might be in here. Um, lastly, we must seek new endowments and new financial aid sources to carry out our university mission into the future without putting the burden solely on students and their parents or families or students alone and without putting the burden solely on the government. We need help for those students who choose a private education. Roughly 50% of our students are Pell eligible. They come from the lowest income uh, quintiles in the state and in the country. More are eligible for TAG. Our median AGI is $55,000 in North Jersey, folks. We give out $34 million every year in financial aid. So we are working hard to keep our prices low, and they are already low. And our debt load is already below the national average, and we're working very hard to keep it that way. And we will seek out the help to have us do that. All of this is so that students and faculty and staff can find their own version of their infinite possibility, not just for them, but for the generations of their families that follow. And please don't worry. I, I told our VP of Advancement, Kevin Boyle, he could not stand at the back with a basket. All right, so why are we doing this? In short, it's because it's worth it. It's worth it for our students. It's worth it for their families. It's worth it for our society. It's worth it for the state of New Jersey, as New Jersey well recognizes. 83% of our students, roughly, are from the state of New Jersey, and they stay here. We want a well-educated workforce. We want them employable. We want them going out and getting those jobs because we know that with an education, you're more likely to be, you're less likely to be unemployed, you're more likely to be civic engaged, you're more likely to be charitably engaged. All those indicators are positive. Education lifts all people, as it did for myself and seven of those people sitting over there. Our kids, our families are living much different lives than did we, and we lived a good life. Maybe not with some of the financial privileges, but certainly we lived a good life, and I want my kids to understand you need to live both. And we'll do it because the sister's vision from so long ago demands that we do it. We are still protecting your legacy, even as we move forward into the future. 
Caldwell was at a precipitous time, as I said, all those tsunami of changes headed our way. I want to say this here and now, and it's not the first time some of you have heard me say it, and it won't be the last time any of you hear me say it. We can and we will withstand these changes. We will withstand the tsunami of change. We must withstand the tsunami of change and we can withstand the tsunami of change because of who we are, because of what we do, and because of how we do it, and because of who we do it for. It is worth it for our students. One final word, some of our students told me they would not have made it at some of the other fine institutions, perhaps larger institutions that are with us today. And I worked at a very large institution. There is a place for everyone. But some of our students have said, I wouldn't make it there. I would have gotten lost. I should have gotten lost there. We're encouraging them not just to survive. We encourage them to thrive. And that's what makes Caldwell University a little bit different. One current, one current student said in a recent survey by an outside company, this was not an internal survey, it was an outside survey, by a company examining the perceptions of a Caldwell education. Here's what a student said. Here, I am celebrated. Here, I am celebrated and educated. I'm not just an ID number in the system. No student should be just an ID number in the system. And many, many of these schools do a very good job of making sure that doesn't happen. But at Caldwell, we demand it. So students, my commitment to you today, you will never be an ID number. You will be a face and a name to every one of us here at Caldwell. And we will do our best to get you over that finish line. So as we commit that to you today, I'm also gonna tell you this, it's gonna be hard. Your journey will be hard. All, all worthwhile journeys are. It's gonna be difficult as are all successful journeys. But we'll be with you every step of the way to make sure that you can get everything that you need out of your Caldwell education. You've heard about our socioeconomic students. You've heard about our Pell students. Here's what I'd like to just finalize with. We are the ending to that great story that so many people are talking about on the news. Pundits, writers. We bring many people here from different communities in New Jersey, from around the world, to form a community based on respect, integrity, community, and excellence. We know that after these collective efforts, by working together, we have proven we can help students move through these challenges into a brighter future. A future, students, filled with infinite possibilities for you, for your families, and for society. In fact, that's the essence of a good education. That is why we do what we do. As Nelson Mandela said, and I love this quote, I apologize if I overuse it, the most education is the most powerful tool you can use to change the world. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna put on our tool belts. We're gonna pursue that goal with all of the creativity and energy we have, and we're gonna do it, and we're gonna start now. And I commit that to you today, as I take the reins and stand on the shoulders of giants as we build the legacy, protect the legacy, and build the future. Uh, really, a future defined by infinite possibilities. Thank you, and uh, go Cougars. Thank you, President Whalen. It is now my pleasure to welcome Sister Mary John Carney, member of the Board of Trustees of Caldwell University, to provide the benediction. Sister Mary John.
As we come to the close of the formal inaugural ceremony, we pray that God continue to inspire and guide Dr. Whalen as he is inaugurated today as the ninth president of Caldwell University. We pray that God bless him during these challenging and changing times with courage and strength that will enable him to exercise his gifts of wisdom, knowledge, fortitude, and right judgment in leading this community in the pursuit of those lofty goals, sapientia e sciencia, wisdom and knowledge. In this prayer of benediction, we ask God's blessing on Dr. Whalen his wife, Kathy, and children, his family, friends, and the entire university community who rejoice and support him in today, both today and into the future. O powerful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray that you send your Holy Spirit upon your faithful servant, Matthew, to be his helper and guide. Give him the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of right judgment and courage, the spirit of knowledge and reverence. Fill him with the spirit of wonder and awe in your presence. May his vision of academia be clearly defined and effective through his successful leadership of this institution. May his administration be marked with justice, right judgment, and collaborative initiatives that foster growth in academic excellence within this community of learners. May his tenure motivate all students and enkindle their social imagination in seeing the world as it might be and be courageous in becoming change makers for a better world to make a difference in the lives of all who yearn for a better life. May he model those characteristics and core values of Catholic intellectual tradition, respect, integrity, community, and excellence that engender the essence of Dominican education. We raise our voices in prayer and gratitude that Caldwell University continue to excel under the leadership of, Pre of President Matthew Whalen. I ask you now to join me and extend your hands in the Dominican blessing. And if you can, please join me in song as we sing. May God, creator, bless you. May God, redeemer, heal you. And may God, the Holy Spirit, fill you with love. And we pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Ad multos anos. Thank you, Sister Mary John, for that beautiful benediction. Caldwell University community, family, and friends, thank you for celebrating with us today. Let's have one more round of applause for our ninth president. This concludes our installation ceremony.
Please remain seated until the recessional and stage party have exited the gym. Students in the back who are not in the processional, please remain seated so that we can take a picture with you and President Whalen. We will be having refreshments in the Student Center Dining Hall right across the courtyard. Thank you.